Oliver surveyed the dozen angry men approaching, swords drawn, faces full of grim anticipation as the dim light broke out of the tavern. He spared a glance for his impromptu companion. The short woman was sturdily built, but she looked like she'd be more capable with a mug in her hand than a weapon. I hope you can use a sword, Oliver said, eyeing the approaching mob. Her companion gave a snort. I hope you can fight in a dress, she drawled, her accent rolling the words. Oliver glanced down at the flimsy, road-colored chemis fluttering around his cows, and swore oath to the fae spirits whose pernicious sense of humor had doubtless led him to this place. Then he jumped forward, off the table they were standing on, and brought his pommel down across one man's nose before spinning his blade to catch the strike of another. He had little attention to spare for his companion, but he had thought the loud and cheerful laugh that rang over the sound of clashing steel was hers. This day was not going as planned. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. John Wick. Who oh boy. John Wick. No, not that one. If there's any game designer I have a complicated attitude towards, it's Mr. Wick. While he's a phenomenal game designer and has worked on several games I've enjoyed, he's an asshole. I know, I know, it takes one to know one. But he's had a lengthy history of having terrible opinions and stances on topics like game balance, to say the least. And of course, there was that scathing take he had on D&D 3rd Edition, at a level that even I, someone who nitpicks for a living, found excessive. But today, we're going to look at his passion project, the RPG that he revived after years of neglect from its owners. Today, we're going to talk about the swashbuckling adventure known as Seventh Sea, 2nd Edition. Seventh Sea and Legend of the Five Rings are kind of sister games, both originally holding from Alderac during the magical time when Alderac made RPGs and not just board games. While both have had a fair bit of support, as time went on, the latter started getting more attention, which is where Mr. Wick comes in, taking the rights and launching a new edition of the game, originally under his John Wick Presents banner, and most recently moving it to Chaosium. A bit of full circle for him, honestly. With a new movie-like look, how does this return to Thea hold up? Let's find out. At 307 pages, this is a gorgeous book to behold, and there's a fair amount of excellent artwork along with text that has a sense of color without having a bleeding issue. That said, I do think some parts are a little too wordy for their own good. It does get the point across where it needs to, though. True to form, a significant amount of time is spent on the setting of Thea before establishing the mechanics and rules, which might be a point of contention on its design philosophy, but I'll get to that later. 7th C is a game of swashbuckling and intrigue, and we'll be reflecting this in our creation of young duelist Luis Bastone. A first step is the Traits and Nation bonus. Each trait starts at 2, but your choice of nation grants a plus 1 bonus to one of these two traits. In addition, we have 2 points to increase traits. Now, Lewis is from Montaigne, giving him a plus 1 to Finesse. In our case, his starting traits will be Brawn 2, Finesse 3, Wits 3, Resolve 2, and Panache 3. Second, Backgrounds, which represent past occupations and training. Each background grants a quirk effect, a set of advantages, and skills. We'll get to choose two backgrounds, and we'll go with Mousquetaire and Duelist. Third is Skills. Beyond the starting package of skills, you have 10 skill points to spend, with no rank being above 3. After spending these points, our final spread is Aim 3, Athletics 2, Brawl 2, Empathy 2, Intimidate 2, Notice 2, Perform 1, Ride 1, Scholarship 1, Warfare 1, and Weaponry 3. Fourth is Advantages. Luis already has three from his choice in background, but we have five additional points to spend on further advantages. We'll spend three points on Fencer and two points on Port Sorcery. Fifth is Arcana, a means by which the hero has been touched by fate. Looking at the names of the various Arcana, I'm certain per certain Persona fans are raising an eyebrow. In either case, we'll go with the War Virtue and the Hero Hubris. Sixth is Story the narrative that is key to the character's development and advancement. Because of the nature of its setup, I can't go into full detail here, so all I'll say is that he has an obligation based on his lineage. Lastly, and an optional step, is Secret Society. If a character takes this, they're considered in standing to some degree with one of the many hidden organizations within Thea. 
In our case, Luis is a member of Los Vagabundos, with a favor of two. Character creation is certainly simpler than the XP spending affair of its previous incarnation and its sisters, but I could easily see veterans taking issue with it being less flexible. The goal mechanic is probably going to rub some people the wrong way, lacking a traditional XP system for advancing characters. I do think an alternative freeform system might have done wonders in this regard. At least min-maxing isn't an issue here. 7th C 2nd Edition uses the roll and keep system. Kind of. You do still roll pools of d10s generated by an attribute and a skill, but the keep part involves grouping the resulting die into sums of 10. Each of these is considered a raise, which you spend on effects and opportunities. Hero points are the game's extra effort mechanic, allowing you to add extra dice, activate abilities, or act while helpless. The GM has a similar resource known as the danger pool that can be accessed by villains, but unlike the former, there's no means of recovering points. One note about skills I should bring up is that ranks 3, 4, and 5 grant a 1 die reroll, let you gain 2 raises from sets of 15, and have 10s explode respectively. I'm iffy on that last one, but I'll hold that thought. Anyways, an action sequence is going to be a bit different compared to other games. There's no initiative order per se, all involved parties declare their actions, and whoever rolls the most gets to resolve first. This effectively makes raises the action pool of each round since some actions take multiple raises to accomplish, while others have greater effects when more raises are used. Interestingly, damage is split into wounds and dramatic wounds, the latter granting additional effects which can be positive or negative. The core mechanic alone is fine, and I do appreciate that dice size is a bit more controlled. That said, the issue I have is with the ideas around it. It clearly wants to take a more narrativist spin, but that comes at a price. The more narrative-centric you go, the more demanding the written examples need to be in order to establish how the mechanics are meant to work. Furthermore, this is going to cause a bit of culture shock for those with a more traditional background, especially if they're more used to things like turn order, specific advancement, and equipment charts. I'm well aware that John Wick has voiced his disdain for equipment charts in his Chess is Not a Role-Playing Game post years ago, but I vehemently disagree with his assertions. That's not to say the mechanics are bad, just not presented as well as they should be. I've often heard the adage, the grass is greener on the other side, which I've retorted with, the grass is so green from all the radiation. The point being is that doing the opposite of something doesn't always yield a better result, and sometimes it can create more problems than are necessary. Roll and Keep, was, as it was originally designed, did have problems. I will freely admit that but going the opposite route of those problems is not going to fix the issue. Consequently, going from gamist to narrativist doesn't fix problems, it merely trades them for other problems. 7th C 2nd Edition is a game that may be able to play highly flexibly in its collaborative storytelling, but that's going to come at the cost of mechanical flexibility. I can see a lot of potential in its setup, but it demands clarification to a higher degree or more flexibility of the rules presented. I don't mean to bury the system, but this is the foundation more than anything else. As such, I can only give 7th C 2nd Edition a grade of caution. If you come from a more traditional RPG background where detail is key, you're going to have a harder time with some of its mechanical quirks. It's a fine rules-light game, but I think the line it's under, John Wick Presents, is ironically fitting. He's demonstrating his idea and how it should be played, not a set of guidelines for you to mess around with as you see fit. Time will tell if an expansion will come and address this, but I likely wouldn't run it without some extensive house rules, to the point of borderline hacking. Stay frosty!